to chew on there. Our next guest has navigated such questions for a long time. David Dodge is the former governor of the Bank of Canada. He is currently a senior advisor at Bennett Jones, and he joins us from Ottawa. David, nice to have you as always. Morning, John. Let's start with the housing story. Obviously, it's a concern for so many Canadians right now, the higher cost of living. If you have a mortgage, obviously, rising mortgage costs as well. How concerned are you about the housing market? Well, well, when we continue to have broadly strong labor markets, when we continue to have uh, excess demand generally in the economy, and continue to import a million uh, additional people every year, it's not very surprising that there's excess demand for housing, and that's not going to go away very quickly at all. And so uh, in terms of the, the labor market itself, um, there are a lot of dynamics there. We do have a jobs report coming this Friday. How long do you anticipate that the employment picture can show signs of resiliency uh, if that issue of higher interest rates further complicates the economic road ahead and, and if companies are making decisions on what they want their workforces to look like? Um, you know, it, demand has remained stronger both in Canada and the United States than, than we had uh, anticipated. And much of the correction in the labor market is going to come first from decline in vacancies rather than uh, from an increase in unemployment. So uh, as we look forward to the second half of, of uh, this year, uh, and into the first half of next year, uh, what I think is most likely is that we have growth continuing, slow uh, in the sense of uh, in, in the order of 1% or something like that, but nevertheless growth continuing. And it makes it very hard to achieve disinflation uh, when we continue to have growth and when we continue to have uh, by historical standards, pretty robust labor markets. What would be your own anticipation on that subject of inflation, which everyone has watched, and obviously central banks are trying to tackle the inflation issue. Can inflation get back to those target levels that so many central banks have been looking to achieve? Uh, the answer to that question, you said can. Yes, it can. Uh, what it will require... Uh, is continued rather elevated interest rates right through 24, right into 2025, uh, to, uh, to continue uh, this uh, slow uh, but nevertheless ongoing uh, disinflation process. And that process gets stickier, uh, if you will, uh, as we try to move down from three, uh, to two. So it's going to be a long period of what would be considered elevated interest rates um, uh, in terms of what we experienced in the pre-COVID period. So for anybody who's been wondering after this uh, aggressive rate hike cycle, whether or not we're nearing the end or even at some point uh, possibly uh, in line for a little bit of a, a pullback in interest rates, when you talk about elevated interest rates through 2024 and into 2025, does that mean these current interest rate levels that we're seeing um, you think will hold for, for, for upwards of t one to two years here? Well, uh, <clears throat> The pre precise number, I, uh, I hesitate to, to guess at. But what I would say is that I think it's very likely we're going to have uh, an interest rate uh, as we get into 2025, having gone right through 2024. I think we're still going to have interest rates in the order of 4%, uh, it, the policy rate of the Bank of Canada, in, in the order of 4% uh, uh, even then. And that's in part because this cycle has been longer and has not had the really serious crunch uh, that some people had expected, uh, number one. But number two, and I think most importantly, because we are beginning the second quarter of this 21st century, and that second quarter of the 21st century is going to be a period when naturally interest rates are going to be higher uh, because we will not have 
the degree of excess. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. C continue, David. Uh, uh, because we will not have the degree of excess supply that we experienced all the period from the 2008 great financial crisis right through the beginning of COVID. We are going to be in a period where there is going to be a degree of excess demand in the world um, coming from lower savings as the baby boomers age, number one, and number two, coming from increased investment uh, as we try to deal with climate change and technological change. So those are all helpful context pieces, whether it's Canada, the U.S., or other economies as well, for those who have been trying to figure out why we haven't seen um, clearer signs of a real contraction or a recession or however you want to characterize it. You talked about slower growth. For those who are curious about whether we are moving into a recessionary period, whether ultimately Canada's uh, economy is going to turn lower, it sounds like you're painting a picture where rates can stay elevated. There's enough supports in the jobs market that the, these ideas of, I mean, I don't know what language we want to pick here, but people often talk about a soft landing. Do you see that as a, a, a reasonable scenario at this point? I, I think it is. I think it's the base scenario. Uh, if you're having a distribution of expectations, I would say that that indeed is now the base scenario. Uh, one w would not have said that uh, a year ago or 18 months ago.